Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm here with Steve, and we are... In my living room. <laughs> <laughs> no more green screen. Yeah, I wanted to keep it real, shake it up a little bit, you know? No, no keying necessary for this no, episode. No, this is a no key episode. All right. Or a low key episode. Cool. So what are we talking about today? Well, I want to show you some sky replacement techniques using Final Cut Pro 10's color correction tools. Let's get right into it. All right. So here is a shot of a Roman soldier. If you look closely, you'll see that Roman soldier is me. You look the part. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and, that, and you have uh, Spencer, my, one of my editors, he's in the foreground playing dead. And I'm looking all, who did this? He will pay. <laughs> so the first thing is you look at the sky and it's pretty dull. It was somewhat overcast day and it's just kind of meh, right? Uh -huh. So the first thing I'm going to show you is like how to brighten up the sky. So let's start by opening the color board by pressing command six. And I'm going to add a color curve. Now you've covered these quite a bit in our other Mac breaks, so I'm not going to do that now, but I'm going to go down here to use this, this blue curve because skies are typically blue. I'm just gonna get the eyedropper and just select anywhere in here. And notice it puts this line here indicating like what value. What brightness what, value of that blue. Right, now I can go ahead and click to add a control point. And if I drag up, you'll notice that it turns the entire image blue. So everything's turning blue. Yeah, you're blue getting there. blue, your, your uh, suit is getting blue. Every, everything, so. Armor. <laughs> armor, exactly. So what I wanna do is add some some additional points on either side of that initial control point. And what that does is they're like lock points. Okay. So now what I want to do is just bring that blue up. And notice in the image, the sky is getting blue, but the rest of the image isn't. Yeah, and okay, so, so you're isolating that, uh, sort of that boost of saturation of blue just to that particular hue. Exactly, I mean, and that's a, just a simple thing you can do. And it, it went from that wow to that. Yeah, big difference. And I even got a little bit of the blue in, in my armor there, which is fine. It's, yeah. you know, it's a sky. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Sim simple little thing you can do to make a sky okay. pop. Okay. That's great. So I'm going to turn that off for now. And I am going to go back to the main video inspector. And now what I want to do is I want to replace the sky. I, I don't want to use this sky. I want to use another sky. And I'm going to go into the... Um, let me turn on clip skimming, one of your favorite tools. And notice as I skim, I have this like cloud background. It's kind of a dramatic sky. Is it a video? No, that's it? just a still, okay, it's a still. A still image, right. And you've placed it below your uh, original clip. I, exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the original clip, then open up the effects browser, go to the keying category, and drop on a keyer. Okay. Go ahead and close that up. And you can see that it didn't do such a great job of keying, but that's okay. I'm just going to get the sample color picker and I'm just going to drag a square right there. And almost instantly I get, you know, my soldier. Decent key. Yeah. Decent key. Yeah. But how decent? That's the question. Is it, how good is it? Well, that's where you have to go in here and you have to look at the map view. Yep. You can see that it did a decent key, but all of this, these black areas, that's areas that they're going to, the sky's going to punch through. That's part of you are transparent it's there. It's transparent. Yeah. The white areas are opaque. What I like to do is take this square that, that's the sample area and move it around and see if I can find a better place to, to grab the sample. So I'll move it a place where it's, where the, where it's not quite, quite as, tra bad. Not quite uh -huh. as transparent. Uh -huh. So that's what I'll do first. Then I'll go over to the fill holes slider and I'll just start you know, dragging this, filling those. I think this is great key, one of the best keyers I've ever worked with. So I'm gonna fill those in and then I'm gonna drag through. It's always good to check your, your key through the entire clip by scrubbing through it. Now, if you go too far, you'll notice you'll see, see little bits of chatter up in the sky here. Yeah, now you can see it's start to get a little you, chunky. Yeah, they get uh -huh. a little chunky. So this is really all about subtlety, finding the balance between, you know, filling in, you know, getting, getting this all opaque in here and, you know, getting a good, good looking key. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on here and just scrub through it, see how it looks. And it's looking pretty good, I think. I got a little bit of uh, fringing right here on, yeah. on Spencer, and there's a little bit of fringing in this, this horsehair helmet ornament. And what I'll do is um, go down here to Matt Tools, open that up, 
And I have this thing called shrink expand. I can shrink and expand the mat. So you can, I'm going to pull right rid of that, right, get, it? it just, just pulls yep. it away, just pulls it yep. away. And this makes it really nice. Okay. The other thing that I like a lot in the Kier is the light wrap. Light wrap is fantastic. And what it does is it takes the edges of your key, which are semi-transparent and it composites those those pixels against the background. Yeah, it just sort of brings the background around the subject. Yeah, it brings it more, makes it more organic. So I like to um, drag the amount slider up a little bit and I'll go, I'll push it really far. You can see it starts to get really soft. I don't want to go too far with it, but you can see what it's doing. It's blending those pixels along the edge of uh, my soldier uh, armor there. So I'm going to go ahead and just back that off just a little bit, like maybe to 20 right there. Okay. The other thing is I found that the mode here at Set for Normal, I find it's helpful to change your um, blend mode. In some cases, you'll get a better result, depending on if you have a right. dark sky or a light sky or what have you. I'm going to choose Overlay, and it really does clean up the key quite a bit. But just so there's, there's Normal, and you can see it's a little bit kind of soft. Yeah. And uh, I'll go back to Overlay, and you'll see it's, it just cleans it up. Okay. So there's one last thing I want to do. And as I look at this image, and it's looking pretty good, um, I feel like my face is still dark. a little dark. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another color corrector. This time, I'm going to add a hue saturation curve. And the one I'm looking for is this one called Hue versus Luma. And What's important about this one is that you select a hue. In this case, I'm going to select my face tones. It's hue versus luma means you select a hue, and then you're going to adjust the luminance the of, that, of that. Yeah. Of that selection. So you can so, brighten up. You can brighten up skin tone, basically. Right. So what I'm going to do is just bring this up a little bit. And look, just like that, I've just brought up those skin tones just sure. a little bit. Yeah. Don't want to go too far because the the, the skin tones start looking. Uh -huh. Yeah. You just just a little goes a long way, and if you do a before and after, so I mean, just that the yeah. one little curve made a huge difference. Yeah, that's great. Right. So I have this really nice look, looking key, and I, that to, you know, totally works. You know, one of the things about doing this is finding a sky that actually matches your foreground. It just so happened the light direction where the uh, sun is hitting the clouds and where I was positioned relative to the sun, it, 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 it matches. So it well, you'll yeah. definitely want to look, there's tons of skies out there and you, you, you're going to want to download samples and, and play with them. I'm going to do one last thing before uh, I finish this, this little exercise. I'm going to go into effects and I'm going to go down to the looks category. And let's say you want to give the background a, a look, the the clouds. So I'm going to just skim over this and you can, you can see different, different styles here. I really like this heat wave. And the reason I do is it, is it creates a, a very stylized uh, cloud. So almost like that movie 300. You yeah. Know, yeah. That that stylized. Thing, right. Exactly. And then if it's a little bit heavy handed, you can go in here and back, you can play, off, on you can back off on a, le a little bit, but just that That's one cool. little look and it made a, made a, a, a great, you know, just, it gives it a little bit more of a stylized uh, a look to it. And uh, I just had a lot of fun playing with it. And by the way, that image uh, is 8-bit. Um, and if you had a 12-bit image, if you're shooting raw, it would even look better. better. So yeah. I, don't, I mean, it's yeah. a highly compressed thing. And that just shows you how good Final yeah. Cut Pro 10's keyer is. Fantastic. And of course, we talk about that in detail in our key and compositing tutorial. I have to say, if you, if you haven't checked out Mark's key and compos compositing tutorial, you have to check it out. He's got so many great tips and tricks in there. Uh, I'll put a link below, but uh, you got to watch this thing. It's fantastic. So there Real you have cool it. Tip. So replace your skies, make everything look better, more dramatic. Looks fantastic. Great, Steve. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.